in order to maintain the plurality that we have in our country. It is not only diversity, it is plurality. And the difference between the two is that diversity is differences in the way we operate, we behave, we organize, but plurality is recognition of different groups and different sets of people who cohabit and live together. So therefore, this is, I think, a meeting where this plurality of India will be, will be addressed, which is our rich heritage, and that has to be maintained. That's why when we are discussing the question of the Uniform Civil Code and Article 44 of our Constitution, we must recollect very briefly what the discussion in the Constituent Assembly was when Dr. Ambedkar, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, in part of the discussion, talked in terms of saying that this is an effort which has to be undertaken and achieved only through the cooperation of all sections of the people and through very, very deep discussions. This is part, Article 44 is part of the directive principles of state policy. These are not judiciable. Many, many noble ideas are there in it. And in fact, 43A talks of what Comrade Karim is very adequately advocating of workers' participation in management. That is also a constitutional provision. But nobody talks of such uh, provisions to be implemented. So there is a motivation why it is being raised today and why it has consistently been raised by the BJP as part of its three core communal issues. When this Modi government assumed office in 2014, in 2016, under his directions, the Law Commission, then the 21st Law Commission, yes. the last Law Commission, it conducted an exercise on the issue of uniform civil code. For two years, talking to all sections and all stakeholders, it came to a final conclusion in 2018. I'll read out the crucial part of their report. And this, that, uh, I, I'm quoting from the report, quote, while diversity of Indian culture can and should be celebrated, specific groups or weaker sections of the society must not be disprivileged in the process. Resolution of this conflict does not mean abolition of difference. This commission has therefore dealt with laws that are discriminatory rather than providing a uniform civil code, which is, I underline, which is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage. Most countries are now moving towards recognition of difference, and the mere existence of difference does not imply discrimination, but is indicative of a robust democracy. Unquote. The CPIM endorses this position and, and we agree and we uphold this is the understanding that must prevail in the country. But at the same time, CPIM believes that uniformity is not equality. The CPIM steadfastly champions the question of equal rights and equality, not only between men and women, that is gender equality, but equality of all human beings, irrespective of their caste, their creed, or their gender. But in order to achieve this, which is a constitutional guarantee, this equality, but in order to achieve this, it is necessary that any need for a reform in personal or customary laws, in any community or section, must be undertaken in consultation with specific communities and the democratic participation of all, that is men and women. Without undertaking this process, any superimposition of any order is something that the CPM relentlessly opposes and will continue to oppose to even today's conditions. That's why during the 
discussions on a, in a constituent assembly, when this constitution was finally adopted, there was an underlying understanding that in India, given our diversity and plurality, the strengthening of the unity and integrity of our country and of unity of the people can happen only when you strengthen the bonds of commonality amongst this diversity. It cannot be strengthened by imposing a uniformity on this diversity. Any effort to impose a uniformity will tear our social fabric asunder. With this understanding, there are today 11 provisions in our constitution recognizing and granting special special conditions and special specificities for different regions, different sets of people. That is Article 371. And then from 371A to 371J, various se se sections of our country, various parts, their people have different protection of different type of rights. That is the recognition of this plurality. And then you have from Articles 25 to 30, the sixth schedule under Article 244, the fifth schedule which gives Gram Sabhas for the tribal areas. All these constitutional provisions exist today as law in our country, and that is the recognition of our plurality. We can give millions of examples of how plural our society is, and this is not confined to any one religion or between, between one or two religions. It's confined, it, is, it expands and grows into differences in custom, in personal laws, in personal uh, uh, traditions that are adopted within the religious communities themselves to a very, very wide extent. That's why, just for some illustrations, you look at the differences that exist in our country. If you go to the tribal India, in the Khasi tribes, you have the woman, which is the head of the family. The men have absolutely no role to play there. In terms of even property divisions, it is the woman. And legally, it is the woman that has the right and to enter into property disputes. You go today to Kinnaur, in Himachal Pradesh, that district bordering uh, I mean, our international borders, in that district, the tradition is that every woman will have five husbands, like Draupadi did in the Mahabharata. That tradition is continued and followed till now, and it's accepted under law. And you have, even within the Hindu community, so much of difference in terms of the customs that are followed, which are actually legally valid today. I'll tell you one personal incident. I'm born into a family where the, my mother's brother could have married me if I was a girl. My maternal uncle can marry the maternal niece. That is allowed. So the story goes that my maternal uncle, who retired as a distinguished uh, IAS officer, who served as the Chief Secretary of United Andhra Pradesh, when I was being born, was telling my mother to produce a daughter so that he can marry. But then I turned out to be a son, but that is a different story. But the point is the same practice is taboo in the, I mean, very nearby, within the same Hindu community. You go next door, I was born in today's Chennai, Madras. There in that society, you can marry your first cousin. But in my, uh, uh, what do you call, <laughs> community, marrying your first cousin is incest or a crime. In their community, marrying the maternal niece or an uncle is a crime. 
Now, what are these laws? I mean, they're all part of the same Hindu community. So what is this uniformity that is being talked of? Then there are different inheritance laws within the Hindu community itself, in different parts. Women's role in the inheritance has always been under a question mark and big struggles had to be waged by us in order to give them equal, equal share in the property. And then, of course, you have the worst of the situations, which is the caste question. Even today, the question of widow's remarriage, even if when you have the law, what is the practice? You go to today to our Prime Minister's constituency, you'll find how that has been violated, but no action is taken against anybody. Or for that matter, the honor killings that take place today against inter-caste marriages, when our youth want to marry each other, if their caste is different, there are cup panchayats that sit and decide punishment, which is outside of the matter of your law. And then there is the very, very big issue of what is called the Hindu Undivided Family Act, through which there are huge tax exemptions, which nobody else or belonging to any other community can avail of, but the HUF exists today and some lakhs of crores of rupees of tax is evaded through that phase. So when you talk of uniformity, uh, is there any idea what is this government wanting to talk about? But we, I think and we all think that that is not the issue of uniformity in Singapore. This uniform civil code is a slogan that is meant to sharpen communal polarization and not to actually achieve any uniformity at all, but you, to be used as a political tool by the BJP for its sharpening of communal polarization. After this announcement was made, you had the Nagaland chief minister come to Delhi meet the union home minister. And after meeting the Home Minister, the Nagaland Chief Minister came out and publicly addressed the media. And he said, we have been assured that the proposed UCC will not apply to the tribe, tribals, it will not apply to Christians, they will be exempted. That assurance has been given. The Sikhs, the Sikh community, with the Chief Minister of Punjab, openly demanding, they said, that has been accepted, the six will be exempted. The Parsis, they said, we are a very small community, therefore we should be exempted from the UCC. In Goa, the Defence Minister very proudly said, the BJP government has brought a UCC, which is there in Goa. And what does the UCC say? That if a wife doesn't produce children, particularly a male child, by a certain age, this husband has the right, the legal right, to take another wife. That is bigamy. That is allowed in Goa. You say then all Parsis are exempt, exempt, your Sikhs are exempt, then Christians are exempt, then tribals are exempt. Who is left? And that is where the actual purpose of this whole exercise of UCC comes before us, which we have to understand and resist. That is why rejecting the 21st Law Commission recommendation that I read out earlier at the beginning, in 2022, in a case that has been filed and, and was heard by the Supreme Court, the central government was asked to submit their opinion on this Uniform Civil Code. And in an affidavit, in a central government affidavit, the Modi government submitted to the Supreme Court that different property and matrimonial laws is an affront to national unity, unquote. What are these different laws that are affront to national unity? The affidavit does not spell out. But on the basis of this affidavit, rejecting the 2018 Law Commission recommendation, 
the prime minister addresses who he addresses the polling agents of the bjp in the constituency connected with the elections and in that address he mentions that latest uh, latest speech that is now uh, circulating that in a family you cannot have two laws for two sons now what are these two laws what is this concept of two we've just discussed from the khasi tribes to the hindu society to kap panchayats to uh, the hindu uh, undivided family act there are so many different laws and different practices that are valid and validated by our constitution constitutional provisions but then here it is picked out as two and it is on this basis of saying there cannot be two laws the clear the game is very clear that this is a entire exercise to sharpen the communal polarization a, a to sharpen the hindu muslim communal polarization that is why the slogan has been raised and with a view of 2024 general election this is the entire game that is being played out that is why this whole exercise that has been initiated now the focus on the uniform civil code the suspicion why this is raised for is basically for sharpening polarization that becomes stronger on the basis of the background of developments that have taken place during the last 8 8 9 years you have laws in the name of love jihad where a particular community is targeted you have laws which actually now restrict interfaith marriages dissuade them that they should not take place or create conditions where it becomes very difficult for youngsters belonging to different faiths to get married even though you have a special marriages act in the country that permits them you have laws in all bjp rural states in the name of cow protection where certain community is being targeted and then you had the caa that's brought out where the focus target was that of our muslim brothers and sisters and then of course you had the abrogation of article 370 and the dissolution of the only muslim majority state in india that is jammu and kashmir now all these things the string of these developments and on top of that this being said by the prime minister today of saying that two laws cannot be when you have this multiple differences that we discuss now why the singling of the two laws that is what strengthens this this particular suspicion that this is actually a weapon for communal polarization to be used for electoral and political purposes in the 2024 general elections that is why today it's not only communal polarization for electoral purposes or political purposes that of course it is but it is much more dangerous in the sense the very unity integrity of our social fabric if that has to be maintained these sort of divisive polarizing slogans and efforts in order to achieve their political objective that is very dangerous to the concept of india as we all know as defined in our constitution the secular democratic republic of india that republic of india is sought to be converted or transformed into what they would want which is the political the political project of a rabidly intolerant fascistic hindutva rashtra if this project has to succeed then the present constitution the present constitutional order that cannot exist if that exists then this or this transformation is not possible that is why you find today a relentless attacks on the four foundational pillars of our constitution secular democracy economic sovereignty social justice and federalism 
these four are being assaulted and part of this four to assault to convert the secular democratic republic into their intolerant fascistic hindutva rashtra it is necessary to sharpen this communal polarization that is why not one word comes out of our prime minister against all this calls for genocide that are given by various so called leaders of religious faiths of the hindu community 75 days an ethnic conflict is going on again connected with the civil code ethnic conflict uh, conflict going on in manipur but not one word from our prime minister means what allow this tensions and strife to continue and the larger design is to change the character of the republic of india so this struggle today the uniform civil code is part of the largest struggle to safeguard and preserve the character of independent india which is based on the foundations of plurality and the recognition of equal status to every single diversity that we have in our country whether it's language whether it's religion whether it's custom whether it's our traditions etc that sort of an india which we have to build that is being destroyed and this is part of that larger agenda that is why we all have to realize my dear friends that this is a battle that will define whether india that is bharat will remain the secular democratic india that we all know of in which all of us were born this is the larger political battle and that is why the cpm is very clear we are saying that we go by the understanding that we always maintain but the 21st law commission also has said that we should deal with laws that are discriminatory laws practices customs in every community every section that are discriminatory that has to be corrected in consultation with the entire community and it is not a question of a uniform civil code being imposed from the top that is why uniformity does not mean equality the cpim stands for equality like the constitution of india stands for equality and it is that equality that we should all fight for that every one of us is first a human being and then everything else that follows and that is why i am so glad that this is taking place in kerala and that too in calicut because i have always been proud since i have come into politics half a century ago <laughs> i have always been proud of one fact that wherever i traveled in india to every and i traveled all over india but the only place where i go where nobody asks me what is my religion <laughs> what is my caste where do i come from only place where i am treated as a human being is in kerala and it is it is that equality of the human being that has to be maintained and all these sort of slogans that try to divide and disrupt this that has to be relentlessly fought the cpim assures you all that we have always fought that and will continue to fight it and together kerala must lead and show the way to the rest of the country to safeguard india today the secular democratic character of the indian republic so that we can change india for a better india tomorrow for all our people so thank you thank you very much for your